Hello everyone. Here is homework number 33, Simplifying Radicals. So we worked with radicals on homework 32 and now we say that a radical is simplified if the radicand, that's the number under the radical recall, <coughs> contains no perfect square factors other than one. So for example, the square root of 20 <coughs> excuse me, is not simplified um, because we could break down the square root of 20 to be the product of the square root of 4 of the square root of 4 times 5 and 4 is a perfect square. So recall the product rule for radicals. Um, if the square root of a and the square root of b are real numbers then the square root of a times b we could break it down to be the product of the square root of a times the square root of b. So what we're going to do is use that property to simplify the radicals by pulling out the perfect square factor. So for example, the square root of 20, we could write down two square roots. And in the first square root, we want to write the factor that is a perfect square. And as we noted up here, 4 is a perfect square. So we'll put the 4 under the first radical. And the leftovers, 4 times 5, would be 20. See, what we did was, and we generally will jump right to that step. We really did consider that it's the square root of 4 times 5. And then we went to this step. But nobody writes this intermediate step. And then what you do to simplify is you take the square root of 4. Because the square root of 4 we know is 2, so that comes out of the radical as just the number 2, and then the square root of 5 just tags along, because that's not a perfect square, nor does it have a factor that is a perfect square. So what you can consider, basically, is writing down the, the perfect squares. Um, I'll skip one. But, for example, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5, square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7, square root of 64 is 8, square root of 81 is 9, square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 121 is 11, and so on. So you could actually write down those perfect squares and when you look at a radical the radicand that is underneath what you want to do is break it down to be the product of two square roots the first of which is a perfect square that's a factor of fit in this case 50. so basically if you listed these perfect squares, find where the square root of 50 is. You know it's not a perfect square. It's a little bit above the square root of 49. And then work your way down the list and try to find the first factor that divides evenly into 50. So 49 obviously does not divide evenly into 50. 36 does not divide evenly into 50. But 25 does. So therefore, I'll put 25 under the first radical, because that's the perfect square that is a factor of 50. And then the remaining factor would have to be 2 in order to multiply by 25 to give 50. And then we could take the square root of 25, so that's a radical, so it's important to make sure you understand by taking the square root of 25, it is just the number 5 and then the square root of 2 just tags along. So that's a little method that you could use. Um, just work your way up the list. And the more you work with these, the, the better you become at identifying the perfect square that's a factor without having to write the list. But let's use that method here, square root of 52. All right, so again, it's a little bit above 49. Does 49... Divide evenly into 52? No. Does 36 divide evenly into 52? No. Does 25 divide even 50, 
52. No. Does 16 divide evenly into 52? Uh, maybe you don't know for sure, and maybe you want to check. Well, just use a calculator. I'm doing 52 divided by, we're saying 16. Nope, doesn't go in evenly, because we'd have to get a whole number. So then, how about 9? 52 divided by 9 is, nope. And then finally, let's see, 52 divided by 4 is, yep, 13. So we could break it down to be 4 and 13. And we're going to put the 4 in the first radical, because that's the perfect square. And then the, what I often call the leftovers go in the second radical, and that would be the 13. So the square root of 4 is 2. That comes out of the radical again. And then we just tag along the square root of 13. Okay, square root of 98. <clears throat> again, on two radicals. Try to pick the biggest one, right? And this method of working up the list works well, and you can use a calculator if you want. But 98, does 81 divide into 98? No. Does 64? No. Does 49? I think it does. Let's double check. 98 divided by 49 is 2. So 2, 49, and 2. And we want to put the 49 under the first radical, because that's the perfect square. And 2 is the leftovers. And then the square root of 49 reduces to 7. That comes out of the radical. And the square root of 2 tags along. Okay, with 60, we'll do the same thing. And I'll work my way up the list. Okay, 60 is between 64 and 49. So does 49 divide into 60 evenly? No. Does 36 divide evenly into 60? No. Does 25? No. Does 16? I don't know. Maybe i got to check that one. Let me check 60 divided by 16. 3.75, so no. Does 60 divided by 9? No. 60 divided by 4? I think it does. 15 times. So we use 4 and 15. And we put the 4 under the first and the 15 under the second radical. Then take the square root of 4, which is 2. Again, that comes out of the radical. And the square root of 15 tags along. Now, 180 is a pretty big number. But <clears throat> working our way, let's say, we know that um, you know 4 would be the only thing that divides evenly as a start. Um, in terms of 180, like the next perfect square is 144. And then... Oh, that's 12 squared. 169 is 13 squared. Uh, 14 squared is uh, 196. So we're working our way up, and you know we're past the 121. No, 100. No, 81. No, 64. Nope. Uh, 49. No, 36. Let me check. 180 divided by 36 is 5. So yes, 36 works. So therefore I could break this down to be the product of the two square roots. 36 the perfect square and 5 the leftovers. And then the square root of 36 is 6 and the square root of 5 tags along. Now one thing, important thing to note here <clears throat> is that if we do not choose the largest perfect square by using the method that I just suggested, <clears throat> that pretty much guarantees we'll be choosing the largest perfect square that's a factor. But if you don't choose the largest, then it's okay. You'll just have to repeat the process. For example, let's say in, with the square root of 180, that instead of noting that the square root of 36 that 36 was a factor. Let's say we just noted that 9 was a factor. So if, because 9 times 2 is 18, so we'd say square root of 9 and the square root of 20. Well, then the square root of 9 can come out of the radical as 3, and then we'd have the square root of 20. But the square root of 20 can be reduced because 4 is a factor. 
So therefore this would be 3, and then 2 square roots breaking down the square root of 20. We'll use 4 and 5. And then take the square root of 4, which is 2. That 3 gets multiplied by the 2, and the square root of 5 tags along, and 3 times 2 is 6. So we get 6 square root of 5, which of course is the same answer that we got doing it by choosing the largest perfect square that was a factor of 180. So either way you'll get there. Um, kind of nice to use the method I initially suggested, but it's kind of a relief to know if you don't that you can always get there by, I guess, beating it down in a sense, right? So <clears throat> then we go to the quotient, recall the quotient rule for radicals. Um, square root of a quotient, this is just a formality, square root of a and square root of b are real numbers. Square root of a quotient is just the square root of the numerator or the square root of the denominator. So anytime you see a fraction, that's what I'm going to suggest. Just take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And in this case, the square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, and we're done. Um, for the second example, square root of the numerator, square root of 11, over square root of the denominator, square root of 36. Can't do anything with the square root of 11. <clears throat> that is not a perfect square, nor is there a factor that is a perfect square. But the square root of 36 is a perfect square, that's 6. So, same idea here. Take the square root of the numerator, square root of 8, over the square root of the denominator, square root of 25. But now, the square root of 8 could actually be reduced. Square root of 25 is just 5, so that's all we can do with that, and we're done with the denominator. But the square root of 8 can be broken down because 4 is a factor, and 4 is a perfect square. So break it down into square root of 4 and the square root of 2, and then the square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 square root of 2 over 5. Alright, so continuing. Um, that's often kind of a classic example. There's a couple more here that we'll see that are similar. Again, you see a quotient, take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And square root of 49 is 7, so we're finished with that. Just recopy, or I mean, take the square root of 49, which is 7, and put it in the denominator. <coughs> but the square root of 27, recognize that 9 is a common factor. So we could break that down to be the product of the square root of 9 and the square root of 3. And then we take the square root of 9, which is 3, comes out of the radical, so 3 square root of 3 over 7. Now, here's one we may want to refer to the list. When we first take the square root of 98 over the square root of 121, we know 98 is not a perfect square but 121 is, and for 98, maybe you'd want to use the list, right? Let's go back up the list. Keep in mind it was 98, so let's work our way up. Does 81 divide into 98 evenly? No. Does 64 divide into 98 evenly? No. Does 49 divide evenly into 98? And, yep, actually we did that over here, right, earlier, so that should be familiar. So, and again, you know, to check... All of these, you could be just typing them in, like 98 divided by 49 is 2. And so we will break up the square root of 98 then to be the product of two square roots. So 49 was the perfect square, 2 was the leftovers. And so that gives us an 11 in the denominator. Square root of 49 becomes 7. Drop the radical and recopy the square root of 2. And so, one last example. Immediately, though, 
the first step is square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator. And these problems by design, and there's a reason that I'll mention here to you, but you're not going to learn how to um, avoid this or to simplify this at, in this course. But in your next course, one of the rules that we are going to have is that there can be no square roots in the denominator. So the way all of the problems are going to be designed in this course, the denominator will be a perfect square. But the numerator may not be, like our last example. Now, 84 is not an easy number to think of perfect square factors. Like, you might think of 4, which is probably a good choice, but is that the best choice? Well, let's see. I'll work up the list. Keep in mind it was 84. And 81 doesn't go into 84. Does 64? No. Does 49? No. 84 divided by 36. Let me see. Maybe I'll check that one because I'm not that familiar. Nope. Um, how about 25? No. 16. 84 divided by 16. No, that doesn't go in evenly either. 84 does not divide by 9, but 84 does divide by 4, right? And looks like 4 and 21. So, first factor we'll use 4, 21 for the leftovers, and then the square root of 4 becomes 2. So we have 2 square roots of 21 over 9. Okay, so the next thing is variables involved. And we talked about variables being involved earlier and we saw how because of the theory that whenever we have the square root of a variable to an even power we can remove the radical and divide the exponent by 2. So the square root of 2 is x to the first. Here's the justification by definition x squared would be, take the x to the first and square it. That's x squared, and that's by the power property. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Divide the exponent by 2 again. Square root of x to the sixth, x cubed. Square root of x to the eighth, x to the fourth, and so on. So the general property we adopted, as long as it's even, the power has to be even, just divide the exponent by 2 and remove radical symbol. So here m squared just becomes m to the first, or m. Square root of x to the fourth would be x squared. Again, drop the radical. Square root of x to the 18th, or x to the 14th, excuse me, x to the seventh. It's an even power. So just drop the radical symbol and divide the exponent by 2. Similarly here, y to the 14th. 28 is even. But here's the extension of the concept. If the con if the exponent on the variable is odd, then we factor out all of the even factors. So factor the even ones out. So for example, I see an odd exponent and I could use my product property and I want to take out all the even ones so basically the, there's six that are even and only one left over and then x to the sixth its square root would be x cubed and then we keep the square root of x to the first or just simply the square root of x and it turns out that it's always going to be, because if the exponent is odd, it will always be such that what's left under the radical is just x to the first. Because all of the even factors are one less than whatever that odd number up exponent is. For example, for the square root of y to the 13th, 
Okay, I can take out 12 factors of y, just one less than 13. And then that one factor is left under this radical. And then the 12 factors, their square root is y to the 6th. And then we leave the square root of, this is y to the 1st, understood. So we just leave the square root of y. Similarly here, a to the 11th, the square root of a to what power, take all the even ones, which would be 10 of them, and we'd be left with one of them. And then the square root of a to the 10th becomes a to the 5th, and we tag along the square root of a. All right, so now we can put all of our concepts together um, in these examples. <coughs> And so, my suggestion is take advantage of the square root of the product and square root of quotient. So for this one, all right, I'm going to break it down into two radicals. Now I have to think of the constants or the coefficients, and I have to think of the variable as well. So regarding 36, it is a perfect square. So that can go under the radical. And then I have three factors of x. So obviously that's odd. Two of them can go under the first radical and then one under the leftover. And then to take the square root of 36x squared, okay, I'm only going to show this once. You could break it down as the 30, square root of 36 and the square root of x squared. And then don't forget to take along that square root of x. But I think in the future I'm going to skip this step and just go right to thinking that square root of 36 is 6, square root of x squared is x, and then that square root of x just tags along. So what I'm talking about is this. Set up two radicals then and consider the variable, the coefficient, and the variable. Now the square root of 72 Maybe you'd have to use the little list concept, but 36 is a factor, and we're dealing with y to the 7th. So any power that's odd that's higher than 1 can be reduced, right? And you take out all the even ones except for one factor, so 6 of them. And you leave the one factor underneath. Notice how it's always going to be just one factor all of these examples one factor of the variable was left over okay and then here's what i was talking about i'm going to skip the step of breaking this product down and i'm just going to mentally take the square root of 36 which is 6 and the square root of y cubed where we drop the radical and we divide the exponent by 2. Um, i misspoke there i said the square root of y cubed i meant the square root of y to the sixth where we drop the exponent, divide by 2 to get y cubed. And then the square root of y tags along. Okay, so you have to think a little bit harder here. How about this one? 24. Well, that's not a perfect square, so work your way up the list if you have to. Let me grab my list just to make it easier here. From the previous page, we've made the list. Square root of 24, does 16 go into it? Nope. Does 9 divide into 24? No. Does 4? Yes. So I'm going to need a 4, and a leftover would be a 6. But then all of the A's, because they're even powers, all 12 of them can go under the first radical. Because they represent a perfect square. <coughs> and then we could take the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of a to the 12th, again drop the radical and divide by the exponent by 2, so a to the 6th, and it looks like the square root of 6 just tags along. All right, so um, number four and five look to be kind of similar to um, numbers on 
number two at least, where when we break this down, square root of 12, that should be easy, a 4 and a 3. And now we've got five factors of x, four of which can go under the first radical, because that would be a perfect square, and one left over. And then, okay, I'll show it again. If you want to show it literally, square root of 4, square root of x to the fourth, and then the leftovers. And then the square root of 4 becomes 2, square root of x to the fourth becomes x squared, and then we get the square root of 3x as our leftovers. So if you want that intermediate step, your choice. Um, okay, so we've got 96. Looks like we might need the table again. Does 81 divide into 96 evenly? No. Does 64? No. Does 49? No. That was 98 that it did. Does 36 divide evenly into 96? I don't know. Maybe you need to uh, show that. There we go. 96 divided by, um, what was that, 36? Nope, 96 divided by 25, no need to check that one, right? Uh, 96 divided by 16, and yes, it goes 6 times. So we put 16 in, under the first, ra first radical, 6 under the second radical, and that's an odd power. So we take away all the even ones, which would be 8 of them and put them under the first radical and then we get the one factor of y left over and then again if you want to show it I'll just show it again just to be complete I know I skipped it in example 2 and 3 but what I'm talking about showing is that extra step where you take the square root of 16 and the square root of y to the 8th separately but hopefully you're proficient enough to not write that and realize that the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th, and then we've got the leftovers of the square root of 6y tagging along. Alright, so that was a bunch of examples with products. Now here's some examples with quotients. So immediately take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And the square root of m squared, which is bn to the first, or m. The square root of 12 can be broken down, because 4 is a factor, and 4 is a perfect square. So we'd have to use 4 and 3. And then the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 3 tags along, and just rewrite m to the first, or just simply m. Okay, so... That's my suggestion. Anytime you see a quotient, square root of numerator over square root of the denominator, immediately our first step. And these problems will be designed, like I had mentioned a little earlier, for a specific reason that you'll learn about later, such that if there is a variable in the denominator, as we have in our last few examples here, um, the power on that variable will be even. So it comes out of the radical as a perfect square. In this case, divide the exponent by 2 to get y to the 6th. But then the square root of 9x, well, the square root of 9 is a perfect square, but x is not. So I'd break that down to have the square root of 9 in the first radical and the square root of x in the second radical and then the square root of 9 can come out as 3, square root of x tags along, and then we've got the y to the 6th in the denominator. So a couple more just to finish up. Maybe a little redundant, but good practice. Again, first step, root of the numerator, square root of 23y cubed. It's 23 that came out a little blurry, sorry. 
and the square root of the denominator, x to the sixth. But then the square root of x to the sixth is just x to the third. And regarding the square root of 23, y cubed, well, there's no f perfect square that's a factor of 23, so he's going to go in the leftover radical. There's three factors of y, two of which will be a become a perfect square. So we'll take two out and put in the first radical, and that would leave one y as a leftover in the second radical. So then the square root of y squared is y, so this becomes y, and then the square root of 23y, and that's over the x cubed. Alright, so our final example. Again, first step, square root of the numerator, so square root of 18x to the 5th over square root of the denominator, so square root of y to the 8th. y to the 8th is a perfect square, comes out of the radicals, y to the 4th, again, divide the exponent by 2 for the square root of 18x to the 5th. We'll need two radicals to break it down. First of which, all of the perfect squares. Regarding 18, 9 is a perfect square that's a factor. So 9 under the first radical, 2 under the second radical. That's the leftovers to give 18. And regarding x to the 5th, it's an odd power. So take out as many even as you can, which would be x to the 4th. Always one less, and then that extra factor of x will go in the leftover pile. And then just take the square root of 9x to the 4th, square root of 9 is 3, square root of x to the 4th, x squared, recopy the square root of 2x, and that's all over, recopy x to the 4th. Alright, so that does it for homework 33, and...